public meeting. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and introduce our Spanish interpreter for the evening, uh, Sam Green Jordan. Sam. Hello, everyone. Hola a todos. Eh, gracias por estar con nosotros aquí en la reunión. Si quisiera escuchar esta, esta junta en español, eh, va a haber un evento en español también. Baje al icono del globo, presione el globo para transferirse al otro evento. Gracias. Thank you. Okay, so we will turn on interpretation. And if you want interpretation, you can click on the globe at the bottom. Thank you all for joining us. This is our first public meeting uh, for Rosamond Park improvements, and we want to welcome you all. Thank you. Um, I want to get started by actually introducing myself. I am the East District Parks Planner with Denver Parks and Recreation. I'm joined by a team from Denver Parks and Rec, including Kara, our project manager. Laura Morales is our recreation, uh, our Parks and Recreation Public Engagement Specialist. Um, and then we have a, a wonderful consultant team uh, comprised of Nora, uh, Sam, as you just uh, as he just introduced himself as our interpreter, Dean, and Eileen. Uh, so we we want to all welcome you. This has been an, a very exciting project. Um, this is something that we're we're really excited to reach out to the community and gain some more information from you all and share uh, some of these improvements with you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to your councilwoman, Kendra Black. She's here to take over and uh, give some more information about the background to this project. Kendra. Great. Thank you, Mallory. And thanks to all the Parks and Rec people working on this project and the consultant team. Really appreciate you uh here in southeast denver looking at rosamond park and i also want to thank all the community members who have joined us tonight i really appreciate you taking your evening to spend with us um like many of you i have spent many many years at rosamond park my husband grew up a few blocks away he attended samuels elementary and he played sports in that park and my own kids played sports in my park and We've all ridden our bikes on that Goldsmith Gulch Trail, and it's such a special park, including the Garden Club, which maintains a beautiful flower garden every summer. Um, it's a great part of our community, and parks really are a great uh, gathering place for all of the residents who live in the area. Um, this uh, plan that we're working on with your input um, will result in a new playground, a basketball court and tennis park, uh, sorry, tennis court improvements. And the projects were funded by the Elevate Denver Bond and the RISE Bond. Um, both of those bonds were voter approved. So thank you for voting for those. Um, the project is also tied to Denver's um, plan for Parks and Rec. It's called Game Plan for Healthy City. And about five years ago, um, the city did a huge planning project process that resulted in that game plan for a healthy city. Um, so I'll just read some of the guiding principles. So um, every drop is to make the park system more resilient and environmentally sustainable. Every person is to ensure equity in distribution of resources. Every dollar to manage resources to ensure long-term operational health and uniquely Denver, provide programming that reflects Denver's community and cultural identity. So thank you again for joining us and I will let our Parks and Rec team take it away. Thanks. Thank you, Kendra. Uh, my name is Kara Edward. Um, I am the Denver Parks and Recreation Project Manager and I wanna go through just kind of an overview. Kendra gave us, she set up well the, the scope for this project and the overall budget that we have for this project is 2.37 million, which includes both the design and the construction fees. Um, this project is split up, as you can see, percentage wise of that 2.375 million, about 53% is allocated to the tennis court, um, both the, the renovation of that court and restoration, and 37% is allocated to the playground and the basketball court. And then there's additional 10% where we're gonna convert some, um, about half an acre adjacent to Goldsmith 
gulch to a uh, native uh, grasses. Um, we're gonna remove the bluegrass turf and just to help us meet our sustainability goals. So 10% so is, is going towards that um, endeavor. Talking a little about the project schedule, um, you know, as Kendra mentioned, this is an Elevate Denver and Rise Bond project that was voted on by Denver residents and approved in 2017 and 2021. So that kicked off this design process in January, 2022. We had our first public survey. We had a, a substantial turnout. So we appreciate those of you that did complete that survey, which closed on March 1st. We're currently at the public meeting number one phase, but there's more opportunities to provide feedback as we continue the design process. There'll be uh, another survey coming out on the 14th. We're gonna have a pop-up event in the park where I'll be there as well as some other uh, parks representatives to hear your feedback adjacent to the basketball courts. And then there'll be a final public meeting on March 28th. We will show you some different concepts ideas based on the feedback we get tonight, as well as in the survey and at the pop-up event. And once you know, we'll present those concepts, get your feedback and then start moving forward with the final design to complete at the end of this year in the fall of 22. And then construction will begin in uh, the spring of 2023. And with that, I'm turning it over to uh, Nora, who's gonna give us an update on how to participate in the project. Thanks, Kara. Um, uh, starting at the beginning of next week, you'll be able to take survey number two. Many of you participated in survey number one, but participating in survey number two, you basically are just going to connect to the exact same uh, link that you use for survey number one. So bit.ly backslash Rosemond survey. Um, that'll be up online and available to you next week. In terms of public meetings, we're here tonight to talk about ideas for the park, and then we'll follow up with some design for you to look at uh, on April 28th uh, in the evening, same format. Um, we also will be in the park on the 2nd of April from 1 to 3 p.m. near the basketball courts if you want to talk to planners. Uh, we welcome some one-on-one -on -one conversation and a chance to drop by. So as Kara mentioned, survey number one was well um, responded to, 200 responses from the community. We also had an online digital tool. 160 people responded to that. We got 160 comments uh, on the idea wall and on the map. Um, just high level, we learned that most visitors to the park live within walking and rolling distance. And the respondents were neighbors who use the park recreationally. Uh, the full uh, survey number one results will be posted online uh, next week as well, but we're also gonna cover them as we get to the various stages of tonight's presentation. So we did pull out some, some, some quotes for you of people in, and, uh, in terms of their relationship to the park. I enjoy walking through this park multiple times per week. I appreciate the bridges and paths and I sometimes walk at night. So people appreciate the lighting. It's a wonderful park and we have a lot of memories here. Uh, our girls have explored along the stream and trees and they've played on the playground, participated in sporting events and attended parties. And finally, it's a wonderful neighborhood park that just needs some love. Thank you for slating it for repairs, which is of course why we're here tonight. So um, as this presentation proceeds, we're gonna stop and um, create some polling questions for you. So you can use your um, keyboard to answer them. Please put questions in the chat. We will pull those questions out during uh, question and answer periods. And this meeting is being recorded, so folks who couldn't make it can see it later if they wish to. Uh, we definitely um, will pause throughout this presentation to take your questions. You can also raise your hand down at the bottom. You'll see the raise your hand icon, and uh, you can unmute yourself or we can unmute you, and you can ask your questions verbally.
So um, without further ado, we are going to concentrate on three areas of the park. Um, the basketball courts, the tennis courts, and the playground. We'll also be talking about seating near those locations, and of course the bluegrass conversion between the playground and the gulch. Um, I'll turn it over to Laura now, because we're gonna do a practice poll. Okay, hopefully an easy one. I will launch this poll. What is your relationship to Rosamond Park? Select all that apply. So you should be seeing that pop up now. Um, the options are a neighbor in the one to two mile vicinity of the park, a recreational user of Rosamond Park, member of a sports league that plays in the park, a parent or guardian of a child at Samuels Elementary, a parent or guardian of a child at a different school, um, or a teacher or admin at Samuels, or other, you can put that in the chat. So we're starting to see answers come in. I'm gonna wait for 15 more seconds, and then we will see the results. Let's see, okay, it has slowed down. Get your last answer in. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. And here you should be seeing the results pop up on your screen. You may have to slide it down to see the, res the rest, but Nora, are you seeing those as well? I am indeed. Great, so neighbors, recreation users, a few parents and guardians, and a few others in the chat. Thank you. Hey, hi, I'm gonna start talking about the playground and I want to start off by um, filling you in on some of the responses from the survey. We heard that uh, visitors love the location and all of the adjacent trails and paved areas and lawns and the creek and just the setting for this playground. Um, people would like to see new equipment, particularly swings and nature play and climbing. They wanna see more benches and seating and more shade. And we heard that the three most popular activities are sliding and swinging and climbing. So we'll be looking to include those in our new playground. Some of the quotes we pulled out are that it's a hub in the neighborhood to make new friends and the diversity of equipment is fun for all ages. It's a great safe playground that isn't too far from our neighborhood. We love, we especially love that it's located close to the gulch so we can walk along the creek after playing in the playground and more recreational fun activities can be done at the park for both kids and adults. So when we design the playground, it will include a number of features. Um, there'll be equipment and we, can, we talk about traditional equipment and open-ended equipment and nature play equipment. And we're gonna be looking for your feedback on this. Our playground will most likely include some elements of each, but we want to um, get your feedback on how we allocate both space in the playground and our budget to these different kinds of play. Um, all the playground, any playground will include an edge and access ramps to make it accessible to all users, an accessible safety surface. Um, the playground drainage, which is such an important part of keeping the, um, the playground safe and usable. Seeding will be included and then successional tree plantings um, to make sure that there's shade on this playground for many years to come. So I'm gonna start off by talking about traditional play. These are elements like swings, um, including bucket seats for the little kids and belt seats for the bigger kids and also an accessible seat for, for different users. Um, they'll these include um, structures, play structures that have lots of different ways to climb up and lots of different ways to slide down. And then they'll, there are structures geared towards littler kids and bigger kids and the particular motor skills that they're working on, <clears throat> excuse me, um, geared towards the age appropriate groups. And then we're also looking at um, all ages structures for teens and for adults who want to be um, active on the playground with their children. Um, these tend to be equipment kind of like monkey bars that, um, that work on upper body strength and those kinds of exercise type activities. 
So we're in thinking about these different kinds of um, traditional play elements, we'd like to have your feedback on that. What kind of traditional play elements are you most excited about? Okay, so poll number two, the options are swings, little kid structures, big kid structures, and all ages structures. These are select all that apply. Um, and of course, if you have other thoughts, throw it in the chat. And we're just thinking about traditional play right now. We'll get to the rest after this. All right, a few more responses to get in. Okay, it has slowed down. I'm going to close the poll and show the results. All right, so it looks like it is all over the board, but um, all age structures is winning this one. Um, big kids structures following that below. Great, thank you so much. That's awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about open ended play elements. So these are more um, geared towards imaginative play. So things like a net climber where there isn't a clear objective. You, it's not that you're trying to get to the top. Every person has to come to the play equipment and kind of bring themselves to it and figure out how <clears throat> they want to engage it. It includes spinning elements. So this is a cattail spinner for a single person or like a net climb, a net spinner where a number of children would be spinning together and, and working on group play. Um, the merry-go-round is another example of group spinning um, element. And then um, there's a rotating climber. So this is another kind of climber where again, it's not really clear what the objective is. You have to bring yourself to the play and um, sculptures are another um, kind of element here. So um, we're gonna launch another survey here about open-ended play elements. Okay, what kind of open-ended play are you most excited about? Rotating climbers, spinners for one person, singles or spinners for groups of people and sculptures, all for open-ended play. Awesome, people are getting the hang of this. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll in two seconds. Okay, here we go. All right, this one rotating climbers um, and spinners were the highest followed by sculptures and then spinner singles, spinner groups was the second highest. Fantastic, I do, I love those group spinners. I think they're, they're super fun. Right, we're gonna go on to talk about nature play. These are elements that really honor natural materials and um, play involving nature play supports the kind of mind-body connections that, um, that are activated when you're in nature. It's a lot of creative play. Again, imaginative play and bringing yourself to it, but with this um, aspect of honoring natural materials. So we're looking at elements like boulders and logs in all different kinds of configurations, um, sandbox and digging activities, uh, climbing wall as an element, embankment slides that really make use of the natural topography to engage um, users, and then adventure trails with multiple kinds of surfaces as, a, as an exploration mechanism. So we'll launch another survey on what kinds of nature play. Okay, what kind of nature play are you most excited about? Boulders, climbing wall, logs, embankment slide, sandbox for digging, or adventure trails, and you can select all that apply. Just a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. There's always one more person that sneaks in, I love it. Okay, end the poll now <laughs> and share results, here we go. Okay, climbing walls. That was the highest we've seen. 87% of people want climbing walls. Um, followed by sandboxes and digging and then logs and bankment slides 
adventure trails, and then boulders. Nice. That's great. Thank you. Okay, and then we're going to go right into another poll. When you think about those three kinds of play, what type of play are you most excited about? Great, so that should be launched. Do you want traditional play, open-ended play, nature play? And we know we could be a combo, but which is your favorite? What stood out to you the most? All right, I'm gonna wait five more seconds. Okay, all right, here we go, ending the poll. So not as high as we've seen, but nature play is winning. Um, traditional play follows that, so, and then open-ended. Open and as I said, we will be including elements of all of these in the playground. It's just about how we're gonna allocate our space and our funding to the different components. And it's good to know people like all three. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Okay, so we're just really early in conceptual design at this play point, but I wanted to share with you um, what we've been thinking about. So when we design a playground, we're looking from a just a conceptual level, how we lay out all the different elements. And this is just, this is kind of an abstraction of how we might think about it, but um, if we have a seating area where it's, which is kind of like home base when a family is visiting, um, you know, you put your stuff down by the seating and you want a place for the little kids, a structure, structure for the two to five year olds to be really close to that home base. And then there might be another kind of larger loop that includes the swings for those little kids. And then we'd have a bigger loop that engages the older kids. So a structure for the five to 12 year olds and this yellow blob um, representing some other uh, activities for the, um, for the older kids. And so we wanna make sure that the little kids and the big kids can be in their own orbits without interfering with one another and that there's a way for everybody to kind of interact and, and move around and engage the playground. So we are looking at two different layout concepts for our playground that I'm gonna share with you. The first is a one play area concept. So this would include all of the different equipment in one play area located in the general area where it is now. And so we'd have one main seating area and then those loops for the little kids engaging the swings and the big kids um, spread out a little bit separated from one another, and then some elements of nature play integrated into that one play pit. And then the second concept that we're looking at is the dispersed nature play concept. So this would have um, one smaller play area in, again, in the general area that it's located now, and then an adventure trail loop that extends out into the park more and engages some different components of the park. So some of those nature play elements that you're looking at just previously might be spread out along this loop. So we want to share these concepts with you and get some feedback about which concept is more compelling to you. So we're gonna launch another survey on that. Okay, so that should be launched. Do you prefer the all the plays all of the play equipment in one area or dispersed nature play idea? I'm gonna give it five more seconds. Okay, get your last vote in. I'm ending the poll. Okay, so 64% prefer the dispersed nature play and 36% for one play area. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on to talking about seating a little bit. We wanted to share that visitors wanna see more seating in the shade. They love that there's lots of different places to sit in the park, particularly along those um, 
those uh, walkways and that people want more accessible seating and seating that's in better condition. And we're seeing that people sometimes use the benches and picnic tables near the, near the playground and um, people will picnic there a few times a year. We heard more picnic tables, some with shading or at least placed near trees for shade replacing the old concrete picnic tables with more modern durable tables would be much appreciated and make one area where there are a number of tables close together or movable. So a large family gathering, family can have a gathering there. So in thinking about the kind of seating, just with, what kind of seating would you prefer? Benches or tables? And we'll launch another survey. And Okay, super simple one, but you can select all that you want. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Benches and picnic tables. Are they going to be the same number? We'll see. Five more seconds. Oh, there's a winner in this one. Okay, um, I'm going to end the poll. That was pretty fun. Yeah. I thought it was going to yeah. be 50-50 for a second there, and then Benches won 93%. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. More benches. We'll have them. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to talk about basketball. So we heard that um, people might not be using the court because there's this conflict set up with the um, playground where if you're shooting at the basket, you might be um, throwing balls at the children. Um, people love, again, the location in the park, the setting, and folks love riding bikes and scooters on that big uh, area of pavement. Um, people want a new surface and they want to see the basketball court separated from the playground. And use is a few times a year, but again, the, um, the condition of the court might be prohibiting use somewhat. Um, I think I won't read all of these, but we heard this. I, I'm always scared that the basketballs will go flying towards my kids. And yes, it is roughly rectangular and has hoops on either end, but other than that, not recognizable and definable as a space to really do more than shoot hoops. Um, so in looking at replacing the basketball court, we're looking at either you, replacing it with a full court or a half court. And that could be um, some combination of like two half courts like you see in the upper image or just one half court or maybe a, a lower um, hoop. Any basketball, the, the basketball project will include um, new concrete paving, all new concrete paving, so not the asphalt like we have now, um, poles, backboards, and nets, and then the appropriate striping for it. Okay, so then what kind of court would you prefer? So if you play basketball there or you don't, full-size court, half court, or no preference. So we can see at least from the people in the meeting. Okay, five more seconds. Nope, that happened fast, okay. I'm gonna end the poll. Pretty split. Full size court, 38%, half court, 25%. So full size did win on that one yeah. and no preference. So we'll see, maybe everybody, else, if once there's a new basketball court, everyone's gonna start playing basketball. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move on to talking about um, tennis. We heard that um, the court use data probably isn't accurate because the surface has degraded so significantly that um, folks aren't playing there. Um, people love the location and the fact that the courts are lit and people really want new courts. Um, we asked about pickleball because this is the, the hot new game in town. And um, we've had a, a lot of people are either really interested in it or might be interested in pickleball here. We heard that in the state they are currently in, they aren't fair fun to use, but on the flip side, they are in such poor shape that, that they are usually available for the little ones to use. Um, we heard folks saying we would play pickleball three or four times a week if there were courts at Rosamond. Denver needs to recognize the growing popularity of the sport, and there is plenty of room elsewhere for pickleball. These are two completely different games and pickleball is loud. 
So the tennis court is a major endeavor. It includes full concrete replacement. So it's gonna be all entirely new paving and um, subgrade to that. Um, there'll be new fencing, new nets and poles, new lighting, and we're gonna be including blended lines for youth. So the image on the left shows the existing layout of the four courts and how we would integrate pickleball. So there's the opportunity to replace one of those tennis courts with four pickleball courts. And we'd like your feedback on that. Okay. Should four pickleball courts replace one of the existing tennis courts? And there's a yes, no, and no preference option. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. 60% yes, 20% no, and 20% no preference. Fantastic, thank you so much. So then the next question um, is to, you can just put information in the, cat, in the chat, but should other amenities be included at the tennis courts? Um, are there other features that um, belong here? Rollerblading is an interesting idea. I haven't heard of that. We will look into that. Rocky. Great. All right, thank you. If you think of something else, you can go ahead and add in this chat. I'm gonna roll along here and um, just share some information about the bluegrass conversion. Um, this project includes an area for bluegrass conversion to provide greater diversity in the park. Um, the project will improve water quality by reducing irrigation and fertilizer use associated with bluegrass. And then that will improve the runoff into the adjacent Goldsmith Gulch. Um, it will enhance habitat and contribute to Denver Community Wildlife Habitat Certification Program. And that's a program that you can um, connect with as well and certify your own um, yard as a wildlife habitat. Um, it will promote biodiversity and pollinators. It supports the city's game plan resiliency goals around adapt and connect. Um, it supports passive recreation, exploration, and creative play. It will reduce petroleum-based maintenance, and it will be really beautiful and lovely and a beautiful addition to the park. We're looking at an area that's about a half an acre located between the playground and the gulch, and um, it kind of excludes any existing trees because we wanna make sure that the trees have enough irrigation. Um, so um, we won't be including them in the area for conversion. And the bluegrass is gonna be um, replaced with a low water habitat enhancing short native grass and flower seed mix. And once it's established, the area is gonna be mowed about once a year in the late fall so that um, it can keep reseeding itself. And um, it should be a beautiful addition along the gulch. So that is the content that we have provided for you. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Nora now to um, field some questions about the project and let you um, let you hear your voices. Thanks for all the great participation in the polling and also in the chat. Um, I am going to scroll to the top of our, our questions and comments, and I'm hoping that uh, Councilwoman Black can help us with uh, a question regarding um, the intersection, the crosswalk at the intersection of Quincy and Syracuse and the, and the status of that. Sure, I'd be happy to. That project was approved um, <clears throat> as part of the um, uh, 2021 RISE bond. So we have funding for it. It has not been designed yet. So it can't be built until it is designed, but it is funded. And whenever there's a bond, the money has to be expended within 10 years. So it will be built sometime in the next 10 years. 
Um, but again, it hasn't been designed yet, so I don't know when it, it's going to happen. Thanks, Councilwoman Black. Um, I did want to bring attention to um, th th there were a number of folks who threw out the possibility of a splash pad. And um, the while Kara put her answer in the chat, I do want to read it here for all to hear. So with regards to a splash pad, DPR's guiding principle, every DOP is to be resilient and environmentally sustainable, which includes managing water use. Given this and the cost to install water features, we're not considering water features as part of this design. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody had uh, a chance to, to hear that. Another question that was in the chat, oh, <laughs> we're getting a thumbs down. I'm sorry to, uh, about that, Margaret. Um, another question actually was, was, was with regard to Bible Park Playground and the designer. Uh, the designer for this playground is different from the designer for Bible, uh, for Bible Park. Um, Studio CPG versus uh, Kimley Horn. Um, let's see, a couple of other comments. Yeah, with regards to the tennis courts have to do with the total number of tennis courts that we actually need. One of the questions, and this is directed to either Kara or Eileen is, do we really even need three tennis courts? Could we get rid of one more? Thanks, Nora. I think that um, is a great question. And it's certainly something we could evaluate is whether uh, three courts are needed in this community or if there's a, a large um, preference to move towards uh, pickleball with that with taking up two courts and having two tennis courts. So that's certainly something that we could consider with your feedback tonight and uh, with the survey coming up uh, that we're launching on March 14th. Uh, and Kara, I'm going to keep you on the hot seat. Bruce Basket um, noted that this park floods. Can you address the fact that this um, park is in the floodplain and how that plays into design and planning? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, that's a good observation, Bruce. This, the tennis courts are in the floodplain, and we did. Uh, take a look at that is the potential to potentially move those courts out of the floodplain and into one of the multi-use fields. We kind of weighed whether or not, you know, the community really loves the fields. There's a lot of lacrosse and soccer that happens in the park on those fields. And in talking with our field manager and our permitting team, um, they just, you know, we couldn't really make it work from the perspective of moving the court out of the floodplain, but and then we'd have to be taking up one or two of the existing fields to do that. So, so given that analysis and talking with those team members, um, we opted to leave the courts in the floodplain and to keep the existing footprint as it is currently today. Thanks, Kara. Actually, um, don't, not to interrupt, but I'm looking at the chat as it's coming in, Nora. Um, yeah. It might be also an area that the proposed, the bluegrass proposed area is floods. Is I'm yes. not sure if that is noted as a flood area. That well. that is correct. The bluegrass oh. area that we're considering, as shown by Aileen and the concepts, uh, is in the floodplain, and we are doing an analysis to ensure that you know that there's not any uh, reduction in the amount of, of drainage potential. Uh, you know, by changing the bluegrass and converting it into uh, the native grasses. So we are doing that evaluation to make sure that we're not changing any drainage patterns or the ability to drain um, back to the gulch when there's, you know, a flood event. Um, so we are, we're doing all that analysis in conjunction with Denver Wastewater. And the, um, the, the seed mixes that we're using are totally fine with being flooded on occasion. So um, that, that will work out just fine. That's not an issue. Uh, we do, um, Eileen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you turn your camera on again too, uh, because we have a question regarding the separation between the playground and the basketball court. Is 
the intent to separate the two in order to safeguard playground and perhaps basketball players as well. So, so again, we're still in the conceptual design phase, but um, I'm just, I went back to this diagram so you can see that what we're looking at doing is separating the basketball court from the play area so that they're side by side and that the path um, separates them. And um, there will probably be some um, seating features in between as well that provide separation. So um, we looked for other places in the park for the basketball court, but this really is the best spot for it. Um, it's our understanding that by separating them side by side, you'll no longer have that interaction with the balls being um, shot towards the, the playground. And so there should be enough separation to keep everybody um, comfortable in their spaces. Again, kind of like those same loops, there's a big kid play loop around the basketball court. Um, the, the question of language and strong language is still going to be there, but I think that it will there'll be some separation that um, supports all the users in this space. Um, thanks, Eileen. We this may be either for Eileen or for Kara. There are a number of questions about expanding the areas in which native grasses are planted um, beyond what you're considering. Are there opportunities for that? Yeah, I, I do think um, this this is evolving that we are working with our operations team to continue to move forward in converting bluegrass to native grasses. And, and we will uh, here at Roseman Park and other parks be looking for opportunities to continue uh, to make those conversions happen. Uh, for this project, we've kind of selected this particular area, but I think in the future, as we do other renovations in this park, I know irrigation is is one of the reno renovations that we're not um, we're not going to be able to do a park wide irrigation renovation and this with design for this scope. But in the future, Rosamond is definitely on the list for an irrigation upgrade, and I think at that time there'd be additional consideration for conversion. And related to the native plantings question, um, Jeffrey asked, will the willow along the creek be enhanced? Um, this, the, the main grass in the area is not native and is considered weed. Yeah, I, I, our project, I think you're right, Jeffrey, there's a, there's a bigger cleanup along the gulch that needs to happen as far as you know the invasive species need to be removed and trimming up some of the the shrub trees uh, or removing them um, that's not part of our our scope for this particular project but i i have seen it and i've reached out to the mile high flood district who's a partner uh, with parks and actually did the enhancements to the gulch um, several years ago to see if this could be put on their radar to support cleaning up the vegetation along the gulch, as well as uh, potentially supporting, there's some erosion issues along the gulch as well. And I've asked if they could uh, put that on their radar to support those projects. And, and Carrie, you answered this in the chat, but it's probably worth saying out loud. There are a number of questions about tree trimming in general from a sight line and safety standpoint. Yeah, we're definitely looking at trimming trees around the tennis courts. Um, there's some junipers and, and other trees there that we'll need to trim just from a construction uh, perspective. Um, I'm seeing in the chat on the north end, it, it sounds like there's some other um, concerns with sight line um, near the playground. And I think we can look at that as we as we start to finalize our design. Um, you know, I work closely with the foresters uh, during both design and construction, and so they help guide, you know, what uh, what we can do from a from the tree perspective. So, uh, if if they have concerns about any trees that are potentially dying, or uh, you know, uh, if there's other issues out there that you know that'll get identified during the design process. Um, Bruce Basquette asks about um, use of the tennis courts by two local high schools, TJ and uh, Cherry Creek. I don't know that um, 
outreach has been done to those two institutions in anticipation of the tennis courts being resurfaced. But um, some of the um, comments that received, we received back with regard to paint on the courts addresses youth lines. I don't know if Eileen, you would like to mention that. As, right, um, there's there's this um, yeah. blended youth lines that makes, I think it just makes the court a little bit smaller. And so those two, two sets of lines can happen at the same, over in the same space. So there'd be like the main lines are white and then there's another set of like light blue lines that allows um, the under 10 group to play um, comfortably in the same space. They use the same net, so there's no difference in height on that, but um, it, it facilitates more varied use of the courts. I think that we're hearing that there's a lot of interest in using the courts and that if they're, once that they are resurfaced, or once we have new courts entirely, um, there are a lot of people who are really interested in being able to use them. The, the use has declined really dramatically because the cracks in the pavement make it so the ball doesn't bounce right. And that's very frustrating for tennis players. Um, we do have a question about the playing fields. Um, this came up actually in our survey as well that the surfaces are not completely level and, and, um, and one of them is, is pitched at the corner. Um, Will that be addressed through this process? Uh, um, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, the, it's currently not part of the bond scope to do any grading work associated with the multi-use fields. However, I did talk about the irrigation. Uh, this, this park is in need of irrigation uh, retrofit. And so I believe at that time we could look at grading um, for the fields to level them out um, several several survey comments related to, to trying to get that field leveled. We actually have a, a comment about the basketball court too, being located on a hill from Barb um, and, and wondering if that's something that the team has perceived as well. Um, it, so the basketball court would be located along that flat area and the, um, that conceptual plan has the trail moving further over so that we'd be using that whole, there's kind of a level zone and that's where the basketball court would be. We also have a comment from Jeffrey, which echoes some comments that came in through our survey as well. Um, asking about neighbor uh, about the opportunity for native plantings as a as an education tool um, there were a number of comments that came in through the survey um, in support of sensory plantings um, is that an opportunity so um, we're certainly going to look at including plantings as a component of the nature play um, zones and that that would be a, a piece of it. So in that way, yes, we will be including some additional natives in the park and especially in relation to that bluegrass conversion area. I don't think we have, um, we're, we don't have a, a garden project or to do an educational garden, but um, it's certainly the intention that the bluegrass conversion is an inspiration to the whole neighborhood about how beautiful and appropriate that kind of landscape is. And um, uh, the idea is that it inspires neighbors to, to include something along those lines in their yards as well. Um, there is a question also going back to the courts about noise associated with um, pickleball paddles is, can you address that from a, from a Denver Parks and Rec standpoint and how uh, DPR approaches uh, putting in those courts and neighborhoods and the interaction with neighborhoods? I think that's probably for Kara. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, that is something that we have talked a lot about as um, the Eisenhower courts has come up as something that uh, the neighbors are, um, potentially not happy with the noise surrounding those courts. And I think these courts might be uh, situated in a, in a better locations in that they're, they're at that, they're close to that intersection, Quincy and Tamarack. They're a little bit more removed from the, the neighborhood to the east. 
And so we think, you know, and sort of just looking at this, um, you know, on the aerial that this that these courts um, are ideally uh, situated from a noise perspective, and we think pickleball would be an acceptable amenity for these courts. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of been our assessment um, in, in looking at this. So yeah, happy to take any additional questions on that. Thanks, Kara. Um, another question came in from Bruce. How many benches can we expect? Well, that's a great question, Bruce. <laughs> I think uh, I think we'll certainly be, you know, there was a strong, the poll was uh, that people really wanted to see both picnic tables and benches. I think we'll certainly be focusing those benches and tables around the amenities. So, you know, by the playground, we'll, we'll have some some picnic tables and benches, and then similarly by the tennis courts. And as far as the number, I think it'll just be dependent upon the design um, and what works with that space. Yeah, specifically about one or two benches along the middle path as an option. Yeah, I've definitely heard that in some of the survey responses that they would love to see some benches. Um, currently, I mean, if, if, or if, if we have additional funding, Bruce, and there's an opportunity for us to add an additional pick, uh, bench pad along that walk, you know, we can look at that. But right now, I think we're going to focus um, on, um, you know, our scoped areas. And then, you know, when the budget sort of lines out, if there's additional, you know, funding that we see we might have, we could, we could take a look at adding one or two benches on that walkway. We have a question from Greg about maintenance um, and how maintenance helps to uh, increase the longevity of the investments in, in a park and what, what the intentions are for, for, for maintenance of a park like this. Um, that's kind of a broad spectrum question. Um, we have our, our standard maintenance staff, you know, that's on, you, you probably see them, uh, they're out there mowing and they're, you know, managing the trash receptacles. So as far as these amenities, we would, you know, the maintenance wouldn't necessarily change except with the addition of the, uh, the native grasses that that will be a, a little bit more initially for them to take care of to, to manage that over the first couple of years while it's establishing. But the other amenities should fall right along along in line with what's there currently. So there shouldn't be um, you know, it shouldn't be a change from the perspective of maintenance. If you're seeing any issues from a maintenance perspective, feel free to add those to the chat and we can, you know, bring those to our maintenance team. Let me just uh, add. Yeah, <laughs> jump in, please. Yeah, sorry, I may just add to that. Um, because we replaced the tennis courts with uh, post-tension concrete and we also, um, the basketball court will be concrete. Um, locks or concrete, they, they tend to last quite a bit longer than the, uh, the asphalt ones that you see that are deteriorated. So um, I think that it should address some of the concerns about um, being able to maintain those structures. Thanks, Craig. Um, it, the, here's a question from Kristen, which also uh, came up in our surveys. Um, is there the option to put a bathroom near the playground as well? Probably for Kara or for Ivan. Yeah, happy to, happy to take that one. So there are a lot of people that would love to see a bathroom um, or a portalette by the playground. And I've talked with our maintenance team about this and the history of, of restrooms in this park. And, and what I've been told is that um, there was a portalette apparently on the north side of the park in around 2013. And there were some complaints from residents um, from the sight line perspective and across Princeton that this was, um, this was not something they wanted to have at that location. So there was a decision made that that uh, portalette would be moved to the parking area. And so uh, our operations team prefers to have it in the parking area during the winter months, as you know, that there's a plumbed bathroom that's available by the tennis courts from approximately April through October. 
And mainly the, the preference is, is that it's, it's just the accessibility. It's, it's easier for uh, someone delivering the portal letter, cleaning it um, to access it from the parking area. And so that's why uh, they picked that location in addition to the complaints um, in, in around 2013. Um, the decision was made to, to move the portalette. So as I said, there's, there's the portalette at the parking area and then the plumbed restrooms are just down the way by the tennis court during the warmer season. So at this time, we're not, we're not considering a change to that approach um, by putting a, a portalette uh, in the north area by the playground. Um, speaking of changes in approach, there is a question about the classic gardening, garden planting beds. Um, is, is the intent to, to keep those the way they are now? There are no those? changes planned to those beds, so they will stay as, as they are now. Um, this project isn't going to touch that side of the park. All right. Um, I think we have covered most of the questions and comments in the chat. If there are folks who would like to unmute themselves and share anything in particular, um, we certainly invite you to do that at this time. I am gonna go ahead and put in the chat the survey page um, the second survey will launch next week, um, just so you all have it. If you, I saw a few people came in late, so making sure that everyone has that and you can sign up for updates. Did we have someone who wants to speak aloud, Margaret? Yeah, I was just waiting for you to get done. All yours. The only reason I asked about the crosswalk up on Quincy and Syracuse is because like, I live on the corner and like it's an elderly building that there are kids and like the new apartments that are moved behind the that are being built behind the storage unit it's hard to act get across that street if you were a little kid. It, it's, See, it's, well, that's why I was asking so the kids could utilize that crosswalk to get to the park. Yeah, we, we've we heard a lot of feedback. I know Kendra addressed this, uh, Margaret, but it sounds like a crosswalk is coming your way at that intersection at Quincy and Syracuse. So it, it is uh, approved and it just is a timing issue now as to when that will get, uh, will get built. Um, I just wanna read a comment aloud in the chat, which is uh, really lovely. Uh, Brittany Saunders says, my kids are listening to this public meeting while we eat dinner and they're requesting monkey bars, <laughs> which is Love terrific. It. That's yeah. great. We sure are glad that they're here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there, and Marlene indicates that there, there appears to be a lot of requests for benches at the tennis courts, yeah, near native grasses, um, at the playground. Um, and it duly noted that, that people want places to sit and enjoy the park. Um, we also have a question from Alicia who arrived late and um, the meeting is being recorded and we can share that link with you. Uh, and you'll find, you can always find all of this will be posted on the project website. So um, you just have to give us a, a, a little bit of time to get the link posted, but you can view the entire uh, recording of the meeting at the project, um, at the project website. Uh, oh, yep, and you have your answer in the, in the chat. Greg asks, back to benches, is there an opportunity to sponsor a bench? And Kara, I am I wonder if you can address DPS. Yeah. I, I think there is a way to do that, Greg. I, I have to do some more research. Um, hey, um, so it, what used to be called our commemorative, commemorative bench mm -hmm. program is now being managed by the Denver Park Trust. And I'm going to put their link in so you can have that for reference as well. Perfect. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I think we are wrapped up with questions. So just on next steps, um, I know we've covered this a couple of times, but the survey launches on Monday and you can find that survey at the website noted below. We'll be at the park. I'll be there on April 2nd from one to three by the basketball court. So I'd love to meet some of you and hear more of your feedback about the playground, tennis courts, basketball court, or other things in the park you'd like to share. And our next meeting, mark your calendars, is going to be April 28th at 5.30 p.m. And it'll be right at that link there uh, that's on the screen. And again, we will be posting this presentation, as well as the recording to the project page, which you can find on uh, Denver Parks and Recreation's website. Is there anything I'm missing, Laura? I just wanted to, not Rosamond Park related, but we are trying to get opinions from people in Denver on how we can support your outdoor adventures. So things that get you outdoors to recreate in a park, in our mountain parks. Um, so I'm putting that survey link in the chat because um, we want to make sure we hear from Southeast Denver. Um, and then I know that tennis courts were discussed tonight. So we actually have a short survey out, not in your neighborhood, but Congress Park Tennis Courts. If you're curious about that topic, um, it's a super short survey. So I'm putting that in there as well. And that's it. Awesome. All right. Thank you all for participating. We appreciate the feedback. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good night. Thanks. Night. Have a good night.